So by frame negative 100, our cereal box is pretty much full. But as we've talked about before, I can't scrub back and forth without messing up this simulation. So over the next few minutes here, while I'm animating, this cereal is just going to break entirely. And that's because I'm going to be making changes to our collider in order to animate this cereal box pouring cereal into our bowl. So starting around frame, maybe around frame 20, I'm going to animate our cereal box lifting up in the air, rotating, and pouring cereal into the bowl. I'll hit S on the cereal box, and you'll see that as I move the box, the cereal sort of stays in place. That's okay. So I will rotate it like this, and we'll see what we get in the simulation now. I'll time lapse the pre-zero parts of the simulation because that's going to take up a little bit of time and not be very entertaining to watch. So now our cereal box lifts up and starts pouring out the cereal. Now you'll see the cereal kind of falls straight down. That's a little dull looking. I think part of that is going to be because of the damping. So I can go back to that end particle and maybe set this back to like 0.2. And now they should simulate a little bit better. But let's see what happens if I turn my bowl and my spoon into passive colliders. I'll go to end cloth, create passive colliders, and now our cereal should collide both with the bowl and the spoon when the spoon enters the bowl. So we see the cereal box lifts up and the cereal pours out and into the bowl. And our spoon jumps and lands in the bowl causing the cereal to bobble around. Now, part of the problem with this simulation is that some of the cereal is pouring out of the bowl and onto the table. Now, I'm not going to require you to get every piece of cereal into the bowl for this project by any means, but recognize that a director at an animation studio maybe would. And so this is where this is really challenging is to make this simulation happen exactly the way you want it to. Some of that may mean that we would change our keyframe on our cereal box. Maybe I would move it a little closer to the bowl like this, and then maybe over a few frames to say about frame 93, I would continue to rotate it down and lift it up in order to let it dump out as much cereal as possible. And then, kind of quickly, I need to get it back on the table. So I would right click and copy that keyframe and maybe paste it on frame 120. So now the simulation is going to work much different. Again, I'll time lapse these early frames. So now we're seeing the cereal box lift up and start to pour the cereal into the bowl. We're losing very few cereal pieces. Our spoon jumps and lands in the bowl, and that's looking much better. Now we are seeing a few pieces that sort of go through the bottom of the bowl at times. Um, so we'll have to work on that. And you'll also see that they're starting to dance around a little bit in here even after they're in the bowl. So one of the things we could do is we could animate the dampening higher after they're in the bowl. So it appears that they all land in the bowl by probably around frame 120 or 
two, uh, 200. So I could go back to frame 200 and right click and set a key to turn that dampening up over a few frames to 0.5. Now, the other thing I notice is as the box picks up, parts of it goes through the table. So that means we have to lift the box a little higher in the beginning. And the other thing I notice is it kind of goes through a little bit here at the end as well. So that means maybe I lift it up a little bit higher here at the end. So if I hit play now, we'll see what I hope is a pretty decent looking simulation. Again, I'll time lapse the early frames. Okay. So now our cereal box. Pours out the cereal, and the spoon lands in the cereal, and the cereal moves around from that, and I think I need to move that dampening back to about frame 130. Yeah. So I will go back and select that M particle, and I'll move these keyframes back to about frame 130, 125, something like that. And then the other thing I want to look at is I want to see what the collision solver looks like for both our bowl and our spoon. So if I look at the collision thickness of the bowl, that looks pretty appropriate. And if I look at it for the spoon, I'm not seeing it very clearly for the spoon, um, but it still looks close. So let me maybe raise the thickness. I don't know. So now that those are in the right spot. Let's watch it one more time and see if this looks right. And so here we go. The spoon bounces in. The cereal pours out. And the spoon jumps into the cereal, landing in it. It's looking much better. Now there's still a couple of little things that are messing up, like we're seeing a few pieces of cereal fall out through the back of the box. Um, and maybe it's still moving around a little too much. But we can continue to work with this until we get exactly the simulation we want.